and Jim, just like I'm doing now, you know, just, he said, really? Sitting there smoking a cigarette, he says, really, you know? But his eyes are tearing up, just like mine. He got it. So it served the purpose, that ritual or ceremony, whatever you prefer to call it, served a purpose that was much greater than just maybe my own need to kind of feel at peace with his passing and his death. And plus, I, just doing the work I do, I know that, I'm not sure I'd cheer and have a party, maybe, but, you know, I really do know that it's, I don't, I don't want to say this, it's not the end of the world, you know. Death is, is something that is so feared and so, you know, shunned and put away. One of my favorite books 25, 28 years ago was The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker. It's one of the most significant books I ever read. I went, wow. And I, kind of, I think about death, you know, especially going to 60, I go, God, what's it going to be like to die? It'd be like, what'll happen to this? You know, God, that's just going to go back to the earth. But like in many cultures, this flesh is just as much spirit as that more abstract spirit. That as my spirit in the flesh disintegrates and all the DNA goes wherever it goes, that, it, that DNA is going to be living in other life forms here on the planet, as well as whatever that essence is that goes into the, we'll call it the celestial realm. So it's both ends. So it's, I think part of it is having that kind of perspective to really see that, you know, it's a big deal and it's not a big deal, that paradox. Death is a big deal. And it needs to, it's, a, it's one of the more significant passages that we make, birth and death. So let's do something around someone's death, whether it's slow, like uh, my oldest brother uh, had nine days before he died, diabetic complications, or this other guy that I'm calling Robert you know, where there was a, um, a chance, an opportunity for the ones who loved these two men to participate in that passage. And I would say, if you can, if you've got the loved one that's dying, participate in it. And again, I'm sure you've heard many stories, and I've heard stories myself, people work like in hospice, that, you know, consider it to be a privilege and an honor to be able to walk with this person as they move into this other world. You know, I, and oh, there's just amazing stuff that, anyway, you know, that I was told happens. So, oh, yeah. what were you oh it's a, the, uh, uh, I, at that time when I was doing shamanic uh, journeying, I, I really didn't think much about it. But then during this one training, we were asked to do that. It's, okay, journey beyond the point of death. Actually, I've done that several times now. And I was given a certain structure that worked for me. I, I don't, it's not necessary for me to write about it, or maybe I will, maybe I won't but that there were um, <clears throat> certain, um, I hesitate calling them levels because that sounds hierarchical, but there were certain passages that one would, could go through uh, that there is, there's uh, four worlds beyond this world, and then in each world there's three um, segments of that world. So one might, after death, go for the, fir the certainly the first world, go into the first um, I want level. There was another word they used, but <clears throat> the first level of that world and then hang out there for a while, and then the spirit goes to the second level and the third level. And I remember when the first journey, I went as far as the second world, and I wanted to go into the third world. And the one who teaches me and works with me said, not yet. Oh, okay. And then in subsequent journeys, I, I made it all the way to the fourth, to first source and center, whatever you want to call that. You know, the first source and center, is a, an, I think, works for me. But also that at cer in certain um, of those worlds that you could, your f you could change form. If you stayed in the first world, you could hang out and you could come back and hang around with people. And that's how, you know, the, the mediums and others will see dead people or experience them or feel their something drops off of the counter or something like that. Um, and then you, you have the opportunity to go um, beyond that as you go, especially as you go into the second and the third worlds, traveling like across the galaxies, across the universe, you know, just like that, just fantastic. And it's just like, whoa, this is better in Disneyland, you know? <laughs> and so it's really, it, it was actually fun and there was a lightness to it, of course, you know, because you're, you're uh, in the etheric form. And then there's an opportunity for there is to come drop back into that first world and still come and return back to Earth. Now, what I didn't get so far is about and do we reincarnate or not? And the best information I've gotten so far about that is that, yes, we can, but it's really a choice. 
It's really a choice. And also that there are other planets like our own world, you know, where there are other beings pretty similar to us, that we can visit those and we can incarnate there. Not reincarnate, but incarnate there in a physical form. Um, I love the earth, you know. I, a, lot of, a lot of people in New Age, you ask them in an audience, how many people do want this to be their last life? And I swear to God, 95%, you know, raise their hands. I'm going, I'm, I want to come back, you know. <laughs> I think this is a fascinating place. It's like this view of this is hell and some of the uh, more traditional religions, um, this is kind of something to be endured and you, you do your best and then you get to go to the celestial. It's malarkey, you know, everybody goes there. It doesn't matter, you're the worst killer and serial murder, you go there. You might have to do some kind of penance or something or they make you stay in that first level for a while, I don't know. I have to explore that a little bit more with my journey. But um, I like this world. I really do. I think we live on a beautiful planet. And it's, there's no accident, those of us who are here at this time, that are engaged in um, kind of, uh, uh, there's different ways to say it, expanding awareness or, or again reconnecting, or the best word I've come up with is remembering, that we're doing what we can, such as this, you know, this film and Alberto's work and, and the work of many, many others. Just, I think it all boils down to that. It's just helping us remember who we are. But I want to come back, yeah. I, and, and apparently, given the information I have, is I'll have a choice to do that. So I want to come back and not just hang out as spirit. I want to come back and, okay, let's do this one. Okay, I'll take these parents. <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. As Doreen says, if, if we do come back, we want to come back together, start our lives together. Um, she wants to be a singer. Not have, have, uh, can eat chocolate all she wants and not gain weight. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I want to play guitar and have my own band and, you know, have uh, my ego says I want to be famous. You know, that's fun to play with. I don't know, but we'll see what happens, you know. I, I, I think that's the difference, too, between shamanism and mysticism. Even though shamans um, do certainly uh, work in the mystic realm, I really get shamans, the number one priority, in my opinion, is that we are healers. That's the purpose. I like playing in these realms, you know, don't get me wrong, and I've been there, I can do that. But, you know, I'm also pretty practical and grounded, too. You know, I, I, li I do like the earth, I like getting my feet in the dirt, and that's just my path, that's just what I'm about. I am a healer, that's, a lot of people go, what's your life purpose? Well, I'm a healer, that's where it starts, but... I remember back in the days when I uh, was, uh, I had about three times when I was a therapist where I went, I don't know if I want to be doing this, you know, it's kind of draining and all that. And I thought, well, you know, in my college days, I worked at um, a supermarket shucking lettuce and setting up produce and, you know, I'm a healer. And I thought, you know, I could still be doing that and still be on my mission, you know, just talking to people, being nice, being pleasant, you know, answering questions, you know, getting into discussions. I could do that. I, I decided not to, but it was kind of refreshing to go, doesn't matter where I'm at. When a judge walks out of the room, takes his cloak, cloak off, but he's still a judge. You know, doesn't matter what you're wearing. <laughs>